Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Thursday, September 17th. Today we will have significant changes beginning across the Great Basin with stronger winds over western and central areas of the basin up into southern and central Idaho. These wind gusts will exceed 30 or 35 miles per hour at times with continued low relative humidity. This may improve some of our smoke concerns over some of the area, but we'll still be dealing with smoke as well. On Friday, the stronger winds expand to central and eastern Idaho into Utah and southern and western Nevada still. We will have the cold front moving in, so we will see higher humidity over parts of southern Idaho into northern Nevada along with some showers. There could be a few thunderstorms, but we are expecting moisture to increase so that will mitigate um, the effects of some of that lightning. Also, winds look like they would be stronger on Friday over parts of southern and central Utah into southern and western Nevada. On Saturday, that cold front sweeps through, so we will see cooler and moist air over the northern half of the Great Basin with a better chance for showers across Idaho, Wyoming, and into northern Utah. We could certainly see some areas of wetting rain, especially up into parts of Idaho and into, my, into Wyoming. Dry and breezy conditions continue over southern areas of the Great Basin on Saturday, so we will continue to have that higher risk down south. Looking at our smoke forecast for this morning and this afternoon near the surface, you can see some improvements over northern California into far western sides of the Great Basin by this afternoon as those winds kick in and that air off the ocean moves in. So again, we could see some improvements over parts of western areas and even over parts of central Idaho. Looking at the 6,000 foot smoke forecast, again, very similar um, issues. You can see generally blanketed smoke this morning, but we should see some improvement or some thinning out of the smoke at least over western and northern areas later this afternoon. We've had no precipitation or lightning over the last 24 hours, and Great Basin fire activity was light with nine new fires reported for 274 acres. However, we did have 24,000 acres of new growth on our large fires. Observe precipitation over the last 7 to 14 days. You can see over the last week, which was last week with the cold front, we did have precipitation in the east, but very dry conditions everywhere else over the last two weeks in the north and west. And that obviously continues to impact our fuel conditions. Very dry conditions, many areas above the 97th percentile with ERC, and every, pretty much everywhere else is above the 80th or 90th percentile. Looking at a couple of our spots where we have some large fires in central Idaho, these ERCs are pretty much near records at this time for the time of year. And in northern Utah, the fuels have recovered significantly and are also at records for the time of year again. So that moisture we saw a week ago has certainly lost any of its effect. Looking at our 100-hour fuel moisture, you can see it's definitely becoming drier further north and east across the Great Basin. That will change later this week. However, at the present time with the winds moving in, we still have very dry fuel conditions. Our satellite image shows the area of low pressure moving in with high pressure dominating, but again, that will change by this afternoon, bringing those stronger winds. Later this afternoon, you can see the area of low pressure off the west coast, and again, it moves inland enough that those winds will increase over southern and western areas up into southwest Idaho. So we do have high risk, which also mirrors the high risk over in northern California. Looking at our winds for today, you can see the areas in orange are generally winds in the low 30s. So we will see those gusts in the low 30s today, so affecting the slink fire and also other areas further north and east with those single digit relative humidities continuing. As we move into Friday, that area of low pressure moves into the Pacific Northwest, bringing some much needed moisture to the Northwest and also pushing moisture further east into Idaho and northern Nevada. Right now, it looks like the better chance through most of the day on Friday for showers will be over central and northeast Nevada. Up into Idaho, these showers will likely move in late along with a higher humidity, but prior to that moisture moving in, we will see breezy conditions, so we do have high risk across much of the Great Basin going into Friday. And these winds on Friday will be stronger than what we'll see today, especially over the southern half of the Great Basin where wind gusts, you can see in the pink and purple, will exceed 40 or 45 miles per hour. So again, much stronger winds for the Slink Fire, stronger winds for Nevada and western Utah, and then even up across Idaho, all of that moisture will be moving in. We will see some wind gusts above 35 or 40 miles per hour at times. So certainly um, some significant impacts for our large fires in the north and west. So on Friday, this is the forecast for showers. You can see generally over central and northeast Nevada. These showers in Idaho, again, likely will develop late. Can't rule out a few, a few showers down near the Slink Fire, but mostly most of that will be on the west side of the crest. Moving into Saturday, that cold front swings through the northern half of the Great Basin. So much higher humidity across Idaho and Wyoming on Saturday with cooler temperatures and also some shower activity. And those showers certainly could dip down into northern Utah. 
Otherwise, dry and breezy conditions continue over southern areas of the Great Basin, so one more day of high risk for winds. On Saturday, you can see those winds in the south, a lot coupled with that lower relative humidity. But in the north, we will see that significant increase in humidity with daytime minimum humidities in the 40 to 50 percent range in many areas. So certainly a significant increase in moisture from what we've been seeing. We will continue to see breezy winds and these winds will shift back to the northwest direction. But again, we will have higher humidity. But We'll have to watch some of those areas with those breezy winds just based on how dry the fuels have been. If areas don't get some precipitation, we still could see some impacts on the fire even with the higher humidity. Looking at the forecast for Saturday for showers and possibly thunderstorms, you can see obviously over the northern half of the Great Basin is where the precipitation will be targeted and the heavier amounts likely will happen over parts of central and eastern Idaho. A three-day forecast amount of precipitation. Again, most of this will be occurring on Saturday. But you can see, again, possibly some very light precip for the slink fire, but most of the showers will be located um, from our Utah fires north into Idaho. On Sunday, that area of low pressure tracks well to the east. We will see a return to drier and gradually warming conditions with westerly flow in the north. Fuels again, fuels again across Idaho still um, have been wetted down, so we will see lowered fire danger going into later in the weekend and next week, and you will see some of those impacts from the moisture further south as well. On Monday, we have another trough moving into the Pacific Northwest um, and possibly some moisture moving up from the south into parts of Utah. So we may actually see some showers or thunderstorms in Utah going into the early part of next week. So some of those fuels uh, will see some responses from that moisture. On Tuesday, that moisture still remains in place over the eastern half of the Great Basin, so potentially more showers, which is certainly welcome news for our current state of the fuels. And then on Wednesday, uh, that moisture, deeper moisture moves a little bit further east, but generally just drier conditions. Looking at our seven day total precip, this is very similar to the three day. Much of that in the northern half of the area is falling here over the next few days. But this precipitation down in Utah is what possibly could occur going into the early part of next week. The eight to 14 day outlook shows generally warm conditions going from September 24th to September 30th. But we again are seeing some signs that some moisture may start to impact southern areas and possibly more moisture moving into the northwest. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.